Breaking news. In a heated discussion with ABC's Martha Raddatz, Vivek Ramaswamy sided with Putin. In order to end the conflict in Ukraine, Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy thinks major concessions need to be made to Russia, despite his belief that the conflict has no bearing on U.S. interests. Ramaswamy maintained his position that the war should not be a U.S. foreign policy priority when he spoke with ABC News anchor and foreign policy expert Martha Raddatz. Instead, it should work to weaken China and Russia's alliance. The President of the United States, in my opinion, is responsible for protecting American interests. And right now, the Sino Russian alliance is the greatest military threat the United States faces, he told Raddatz. In my opinion, the most pressing threat we face is a growing Sino Russian alliance, which we are encouraging by continuing to fight in Russia and arm Ukraine. After Ramaswamy answered that he wouldn't cut off U.S. military aid to Ukraine unless Russia broke its alliance with China, Raditz pressed him on how he'd approach Russian President Vladimir Putin if he were in charge. I don't understand. Vladimir Putin takes orders from nobody. Raditz. That has not been successful so far. She also mentioned that Ramaswamy, a major splinter in the peace talks, has said he would let Russia take over the Donbass, a region of Ukraine that is partially occupied by Russia. I don't trust Putin, Ramaswamy insisted. But I believe Putin acts in his own self-interest. I don't think he enjoys playing second fiddle to Xi Jinping. Therefore, I believe that we should seek a peaceful resolution to the Ukraine conflict by offering Russia significant concessions, such as freezing the current lines of control in an armistice agreement reminiscent of the Korean War. At the end of their conversation, Raditz injected some realism by saying the candidate's plan really wouldn't want to involve Ukraine. Ramaswamy agreed, recognizing that Ukraine's membership in NATO would be blocked but noting that the war would end. Trump's favorite spoiler candidate is Dr. Vivek Ramaswamy. Check out the Daily Beast for more info. Sign up for our email newsletter and we'll send you the latest scoops and scandals from the Daily Beast. Please join us. Maintain your knowledge with unrestricted access to the Daily Beast. Sign up right away. On Monday, the First Minister of Scotland is scheduled to tell business leaders that Scotland's ability to innovate will determine whether or not the country is successful in its push toward net zero. Speaking at the Edinburgh SCDI Forum on behalf of the Scottish Council for Development and Industry will be Humza Yusuf. To express his desire to become one of the most innovative small countries in the world, the First Minister is expected to announce the publication of a new innovation strategy this week during his speech. The transition to net zero is a huge economic opportunity, he will likely say. Because of how important it is to Scotland's economic future, we will collaborate with businesses to ensure a smooth transition. That achievement will rely heavily on our inventiveness. The Scottish Government will release its innovation strategy later this week outlining its plans to make Scotland one of the world's most innovative small countries. The strategy was developed with extensive input from businesses and other stakeholders under the direction of a steering group co-chaired by Strathclyde University's Sir Jim MacDonald. Government spending on innovation has increased in recent years. We've established seven centres for innovation in fields like data science and biotechnology over the past decade. New organizations, like Scotland's National Manufacturing Institute, have been set up.